Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Madison Charlton from MLC Tech and now the video is already facing a projector shortage of its next generation of Blackwell graphics cards. And this is mainly due to the allocation and demand, especially in the space of AI and enterprise. So this is only going to spell trouble for us normal consumers at home. So sit back and relax as we dive into the upcoming expected shortage of NVIDIA's next generation of graphics cards. Now it's no secret out there that the market has been eagerly awaiting the village next generation of Blackwell based GPUs. But unfortunately us general consumers at home may have to wait even longer than originally anticipated as there are already signs of forthcoming shortages. And the most crazy thing about this news is that they haven't even made their first appearance yet but it looks like it could be hard to get hold of Nvidia's next generation graphics cards. Well at least that was the message that Nvidia's CFO Kotel Crest delivered to the market at the company's closely scrutinized earnings report this week. With a quote from Nvidia CFO saying that we expect our next generation products to be supply constrained as demand far exceeds supply. Now this news comes of absolutely no surprise to me as Nvidia is already waging war with existing clients to get its current generation of AI chips and AI graphics cards. Now Nvidia finds themselves at a bit of a crossroads as they want to take the approach to stave off customers ordering more chips than they need but at the same time they don't want to push people away to competitors such as AMD with their line of forthcoming AI chips. Now the leather jacket man himself, CEO Jensen Huang, addressed the issue of fairness and how the company allocates to highly coveted products during the recent earning calls. With him quote saying, we allocate fairly, we do the best we can to allocate fairly and avoid allocating unnecessarily. And even without Nvidia's latest warning of shortages, Nvidia's next generation B100 products were pretty much a foregone conclusion with these products being in tight supply. For starters, customers have almost surely pre-ordered some of these products with a lot of allocation and signups from a lot of enterprise customers already. And while we don't have too much details on the Blackwell architecture itself as of yet, it has been frequently rumored that Nvidia will be the first architecture to adopt a multi-chiplet design which can introduce more complication to the packaging of these chips. With there being more work needed to package all of these different chiplets on the same substrate and also have them communicate effectively between each other. But on another hand a report from Tom's Hardware stated that a multi-chiplet design could simplify the production on the silicon level as it is easier to maximize the yields of smaller chips which was a massive issue we saw with the 40 series line and the Ada Lovelace architecture where there was a much lower yield of these Ada Lovelace dies. Which Nvidia claimed to be partially responsible to the high costs of the 40 series though I'm sure most of us at home already know the other driving factor for those increased costs and of course that was money. And now another potential hiccup in question of whether Nvidia can keep up with the supply and demand of its black hole GPUs and that is Nvidia's current and upcoming AI and consumer GPUs are all fabbed at TSMC, which already has its own production limits. With the fact that Nvidia has allocated TSMC's N3 process for its upcoming line of GPUs, now the N3 process is already very high in demand. With TSMC themselves having tight allocation for multiple companies, for example, the N3 process has been tightly allocated with Apple, Nvidia, and also recently reported that they're also going to be fabricating some of Intel's upcoming art graphics for their iGPUs. So this process node is already in tight allocation at TSMC as it is. The market is very eager to see the Blackwell architecture unveiled in its full glory and there has been a wealth of speculative information on Blackwell's expected performance but with no solid details as of yet. But currently the rumours and expected performance are reporting that the increase in performance won't be as impressive as the jump from the RTX 3000 to 4000 which I do need to note that the performance gap from those two generations was impressive if you look at it only on the high end when we look to the lower mid to low end of the market for the likes of the 4060 to 4060 Ti's there was absolutely no improvement or jumping in performance at all but if we go back to all of the leaks and reports it's apparently expected that the RTX 5090 which is expected to see a 50% increase in scale now that report can be interpreted in different ways I presume when they say this they mean a 50% scale in core increase. We also expect to see a 52% increase in memory bandwidth, a 78% increase in LT cache and a 15% increase in frequency. 
with an expected 1.7 times performance uplift compared to the last generation. But we may not have to wait much longer until we have confirmed details of these GPUs. With next month, NVIDIA is hosting GTC, otherwise known as the GPU Technology Conference, and this will feature a keynote from the leather jacket man himself about AI and AI hardware, and this would be the perfect venue to unveil the Blackwell GPU architecture. So while it's exciting that we could be getting a new GPU architecture right around the corner, we need to actually focus on, well, you viewers at home. What would this actually mean for you? With there being such high demands and allocation in their enterprise and AI space, this can only mean bad things for us consumers at home who just want to buy a normal graphics card just to play some games. Quite clearly, NVIDIA's primary focus is with AI and enterprise graphics cards. So in terms of mainstream cards, I don't think NVIDIA is going to really chuck as much. And if they do, they're going to want to sell us the super high end to begin with, such as an RTX 5080 and 5090. But with this tight demand of the Blackwell architecture and also TSMC's M3 process, this could only mean that they're going to charge us an absolute fortune to get our hands on the super high end of what they class as a consumer level card. Imagine still trying to claim a 5090 is a consumer level card while charging in excess of $2,000 for it. So while I want to be very excited for this architecture, I know a lot of you people at home aren't going to be so much due to the fact that it's not going to be attainable for us general consumers. But I will bring you all of the coverage and details when we officially have them confirmed. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions of the story in the comments down below. What do you think of Nvidia's next generation of GPUs and how do you think the high demand and tight allocation for these GPUs is going to affect the rest of the market as a whole? Anyway, I have been Madison Charlton from MLC Tech. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like this video in any way, shape or form, make sure to give this video a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this in the future. Thank you once again for watching today's video and I hope to see you in another one soon. Goodbye for now.